Hello, my name is Macy Fonz. I'm the horticulture agent for the Mason County Cooperative Extension Service. And today we are going to talk about turnips. So this is a part of our series and it is our second class for the container gardening and healthy eating. And turnips can be grown in the early spring and late summer and into fall. They're easy to grow. Some cultivars are grown for their greens. Some are grown for the turnip themselves. Varieties for their root growth include Just Right. And the Just Right is a hybrid variety. It's about a 28 day harvest for greens and 60 days for roots. It's smooth, it's a high quality and has a mild root, um, pure white for, for fall. The Gem Feather is a 75 day um, it's an heirloom variety. It's more of like an egg shape. It has a creamy white texture and it has a smooth foliage. And then we have the golden ball, which is about a 60 day harvest. It has a sweet, it's more of a fine grain with the yellow flesh. And then we have also the market express. It's the earliest. So if you're looking for a really short, short turnaround, it's about 38 days, uh, but they're the baby turnips and uh, they do have the, the white roots. And then we also have purple top white globe. They're a 50 day, 55 day harvest and they have a standard purple and white um, and they have the, the globe roots. There's also varieties um, just for root growth and um, some are more based for roots and some are more based for the greens themselves. And um, with each one of these, um, there's, there's also, uh, uh, most of them are considered hybrid for the variety for the, the root growth. For example, the Rural, the rural Crown is about a 52 day harvest, um, but the Scarlet Queen is about a 45 day harvest. And when we talk about, um, we talked a little bit about heirloom, a little bit about hybrid. So the hybrid, it's basically a, a mix between two different varieties that makes, um, that makes this certain variety such as the Royal Crown. And it basically it takes qualities of both varieties and mixes them together so that um, it makes a, a, a better um, solution or a better plant for you. So it might have some um, different qualities that um, we look for such as disease control or maybe more resistant to insects, things like that. And then we have varieties also for greens. So the, the, the ones for greens is uh, all top. That's also a hybrid. It takes about 35 days. And then we have seven top. It's about 40 days. And we have a couple others. They're usually um, a little bit shorter um, to get those greens compared to the uh, turnip itself. For your soil preparation, uh, if you have a container garden, typically there's not a whole lot of soil preparation that has to be done, especially if you purchase the soil that year um, because it already has fertilizer within it. But if you've used uh, the pot before, the potting mix last year, or if you're planting in a garden, you do want to look at a soil sample. And we offer soil samples at the extension office and just depending on which um, county you live in, it can range. Um, you know, anywhere from six, seven, eight dollars. In Mason County, it's seven dollars, but it's going to tell you exactly what nutrients you need. So you might need lime and you um, also might need nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So that's the N, P, and K. Every year you will always need nitrogen. Typical gardens, um, we really don't want that 5.5 range. We really want a little bit higher, about the six, 6.2 is what we're looking at. Is, is about average what we want to see for a garden. Um, around Mason County and a lot of places, we typically have higher pHs, but every once in a while, I do see um, some places that have a, a low pH of that 5.5, and that's a little bit too low. So for each crop, it does have a little bit different requirement. And um, for example, you would need 80 pounds of nitrogen per acre for um, for turnips. And, but whenever you look at a small garden, you're, you're going to need a lot less, but every year you will need nitrogen. Um, even if your soil sample says you don't need phosphorus and potassium, nitrogen is something you always need. Um, your potassium rates, 
whenever you look at turnips, um, you it just depends on um, what your test tells you and how much you're going to need. So if you have 250 um, for your index, then you're going to have a rate of zero. So you're going to need no um, potassium for the amount of acreage you have for your turnips. Uh, typically, again, if you have a container garden, um, your fertilizer is included and uh, you don't have to worry too much about that. When we talk about planning, you can start planning um, turnips about March 15th and you can sow in three week intervals. So you don't have to sow them all at once if you have multiple containers or um, the container that we do have, the, the cloth container, you can plant um, a couple, you know, a couple of places and then three weeks later plant a couple more places. Maybe, you know, you're a single family or you're one person, you don't want to eat all of them um, at once or you can't. So you can spread that out. Typically, um, the temperature needs to be about 50 to 85 degrees to germinate. So we are having these warmer days now and it can have a wide variety of time for it to germinate. Typically it's about seven to 10 days. It can take a little bit longer. Um, whenever you are ready to um, plant, basically you're gonna broadcast that seed. It's, it's pretty common, um, but whenever you have container gardens, you can be a little more precise. Um, and you, what you would like to have is once those plants grow a little bit, you can thin those out and um, you want to basically have about two to three in the area. So um, you, you can thin them out when they're about one to two inches tall. And then um, you want to thin those three to four inches between each plant. So you have a plant and then about four inches over, you'll have another plant. So you will have to thin those out as time goes on. Now for containers, um, you can, again, we was looking at that three to four inch range. So you can have three to four, you can even have up to five inches apart, but you do want the container to be about five, about eight inches deep. Now um, we do see sometimes people like to put other things in the bottom of the container just to save on soil. But where this is a turnip, you do not want to do that because it is a root vegetable. So you want to make sure that you have all the space that you can fill those containers up and you want at least eight inches of depth. Um, typically, purple top globe is a good variety for containers and seven top. And um, you can even have a little bit of shade if, um, if, you, if you have areas you can that, that maybe you typically can't put a container they can withstand some shade. Now for watering, you wanna water deeply at least once a week and um, you wanna avoid light watering because it promote, promotes shallow roots. So if you do a little bit of water every day, um, you wanna make sure to, to make sure that the plant has enough water. So if you've ever watered, for example, a flower bed, if you get there and you have your water hose on top, you think, oh, I'm doing great. I'm gonna leave it here for a couple of minutes. But if you dig down in the soil, a lot of that water just sheds off. So make sure that your plant is receiving enough um, water. Now, what I mean by that is I don't want you to soak them and have them completely wet. It's um, based upon when the plant needs water. So dig down in the soil a little bit, You know, put your hand on the edge there and see if it's moist or see if it's, if it's dry. And you can tell if you need water or not. But with containers, um, you, you probably, you definitely want to look at um, watering probably more regularly than you would a typical garden because that wind is passing through and um, you have a container that's cloth and it's open basically on all sides. Now there are some insects to worry about. Um, one of them is aphids. So aphids are a really small insect and typically they're on the underside of the leaf. Now I have a picture here and they're red and they have wings. Um, sometimes aphids are red and they have wings, but they are, are also green. They're a very light tint green. So they're really hard to identify if you don't know what you're looking for. So you can look on the bottom of the leaf is where they like to live. So turn it up and see if there's like any of these green or red dots on there. And if they are, um, there are some products that, that are available because, um, we typically with container gardens, we suggest people to just smash the bugs, but aphids can be hard to control and they can be hard to smash because they're so small. And um, so if you have questions about 
um, some insecticide. We can look at organic or um, different things that you can use. But I would say, you know, scout your crop. So go out and see if you even have an aphid problem. Don't spray insecticide just because, you know, because you think you're going to have it. If you start to see that you have the issue, you need to be on top of it, but um, don't just spray something just in case. Also, you have cutworms. Typically, cutworms are not going to be a problem within container gardens because they are on the top of the soil and they can go through and cut the top part of the plant off. But if you have a container, they would have to crawl up to the container. So um, in a typical garden, they can be, but um, typically not within a container. We also have uh, sow bugs that can roll into a ball. They eat organic matter. And um, every once in a while they can cause root damage, but um, typically they're not an issue. So it's something that you might see, but they, they typically don't cause problems. One of the main issues I've seen is uh, flea beetles. So the flea beetle is over here on the right and they look very small, almost like the end of a pinhead and they hop. So they will jump from one spot to another and it's not like a, a flea that you have see on cats or dogs or anything. And these are flea beetles and they like to chew on your plants. So it looks like a shotgun has went off into your plants. It has holes everywhere. And these can be difficult to control too. And, you know, if you have multiple containers that are having this problem, you can install uh, floating row covers. So like the old tobacco cotton and that type, you can uh, find something that's similar. It's a, it's a floating row cover and you can put those on and um, take it off when needed. But um, there are some insecticides and some organic ways you can control these two if that's something you're interested in. But again, you need to go out and scout to see if this is a problem. You also might have seed or root maggot. So um, once you cut open your um, plants or cut open the turnip itself, you might see that you have uh, a root maggot and there are whitish uh, color and they tunnel inside of the root system and they cause part of it to rot. And um, you might not see it at first, but once you pull that turn it up, turn up, up, that's when you see the insect problem. And then wire worms and um, wire worms are a yellowish uh, body. They're the worm, it says part A and they turn into a click beetle, which is part B. Uh, typically, we see wireworms more where people till up a, a garden and they have had sod in there for a number of years or, or pasture or something along those lines. So more where there's grass, we see more issues with the wireworm, but they can eat on, um, on the turnip itself while it is in the soil. There are some diseases also to consider um, one of them is a powdery mildew and it's a white color. It almost looks like baby powder. And um, the best thing for, for a lot of these diseases is that you wanna make sure to clean up the area and you thin out the plants. And I know this is difficult because we like to see the plants grow. We don't wanna thin them out, but clean up the area and um, thin those plants out and water the plants as low as you can. So you don't wanna water on top of the leaves. You wanna basically just water where the soil is because that plant needs to dry off. If it's not dry, it can um, cause some problems. And sometimes the soil can splash or the water can splash the soil and it gets onto the plant and it makes it dirty and you have some disease problems. And um, there are some control methods and they're more of a, a fungicide's more of a way from stopping it, from pre pre preventing it from spreading to another plant. But with container gardens, um, it, it might not be worth the, the price of some of these fungicides. But some of these things, you know, we like to keep on hand just as a preventative. If you do start to see, hey, I, I have uh, powdery mildew. Um, also in your publication, ID 128, it goes over what fungicides that you can use. And there's one more slide I have here and it goes over insects. Um, another issue you can have is cabbage looper and they like to just go through and eat the, uh, the top of the leaves themselves. 
and the garden webworm. So the main ones is probably cabbage looper. Um, if you see these, smash them because they like to eat on the tops and they can turn into a, a pretty butterfly, but um, they do cause a lot of problems. And back to diseases, if you start to see once you harvest, you have these uh, term turnips that look a little bit odd. Club root is a, is a problem. It's where the root becomes swollen and it uh, looks a little bit odd. It can look pale or yellow and it can wilt. Um, the main thing with this is that you improve your drainage. You wanna look at a soil sample. So hopefully you don't have this problem with a container garden, um, but maybe if you have your container garden um, in a, you know, in a, in a dip, you know, if you have it sitting outside in the, you know, on top of your grass, it might be dipped down and you don't have the, the drainage that you need. Typically, probably not going to be a, a problem with the container gardens. Rust can also be an issue. If uh, you have rust, you can look on the underside of the leaf and it looks like these little um, yellow to orange specks. And uh, a lot of this is um, some of these diseases can spread by weeds. So make sure you put your container garden in a good area that um, you have weed control. Not only, you know, you don't have to worry about weeds within the container, but weeds around it itself, because those diseases can spread from um, the, the weeds onto the crops. And um, within that, there, there's really no fungicides approved by the EPA to control for turnips and for the rust. So again, a lot of it is, is the main thing is basically you wanna have sanitation. Make sure to get those weeds away. You wanna thin out the, uh, the turnips so that they can have good flow and aeration so that wind can come through and dry them. And you know, if you have any plants that are dying or um, you have any leaves that fall off, make sure to get those out of the containers too. Turnic mosaic is a disease. It, it causes um, the leaves to look disoriented or um, they can start to shrivel and they can turn yellow and they almost look like they're starting to crunch together, the leaves do. And again, sanitation is the main key. Um, also, you know, you wanna look at the disease, the plants around it. If you have uh, volunteer mustard or if you have volunteer turnip, that's, um, you know, it's, it's off at a, a little bit further out. Anything that you really don't take care of, you know, if it could spread a disease to your plants, you do want to be careful um, and, and make sure to have a good sanitation. Now, companion planting, sometimes people enjoy companion planting and good companions to plant near uh, your turnips would be peas, which if you're in the container gardening program, you've already planted, uh, vetch, and there's really not a lot of bad companions for turnips. When you harvest, you want to harvest um, when it reaches the desired size. Harvest um, during, if you have a, a fall garden, you want to harvest before a freeze. And when you harvest, you want to give a, a half twist and then you can pull and loosen the soil. So you, you probably won't have to loosen the soil too much with the container garden. You can cut off the top um, part of it and you can wash the roots and place them in a, in a plastic bag and you can put them in a, in a cool area or refrigerator for a couple months. And you can get a couple of cuttings for turnip tops when, excuse me, when you harvest it, um, you want to make sure that the night temperatures are um, at least 40 degrees. If you get, if it gets too hot, um, you're going to have a bitter taste. So if the night temperatures get over 40 degrees, that's whenever you start to have a more of a bitter taste with the turnips because they're an early season um, or a late fall type of crop. If you have questions about um, gardening in general or about turnips, you can stop by the Mason County Extension Office. We'd be happy to help you. And here are some references that you can refer back to if you would like to um, look further. Thank you. Hi guys, I know you've been talking about turnips today, so today we're going to make honey glazed turnips. And you'll need a fourth of a teaspoon of salt and a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper, two tablespoons of canola oil, two tablespoons of honey, a fourth of a cup of water, a pound and a half of turnips, 
and we're going to peel and slice those, or you can dice them however you want, in a medium-sized pan. So I'm going to get started on our turnips. Off. Can you all see? Mm -hmm. We'll start peeling. Okay, so we're going to add the canola oil, water, and honey to this pot and bring to a boil. spray my cup, so I'm having a hard time getting my honey out. Alright, so we're going to bring that to a boil, and when it comes to a full boil, I am going to add the turnips, and then we're going to let them come back to a boil, and then let them simmer for 10 minutes. Okay. I don't know if you all can hear that, but it is boiling. So now I'm going to add the turnips. The salt and the pepper. I'm going to toss them around. And I'm going to bring it back to a boil. And then let it simmer for 10 minutes. Okay. Okay, guys. This is what our turnips look like. And usually I eat turnips. Um, I dice them up and roast them in a little bit of olive oil and seasonings in the oven with other root vegetables like carrots and sweet potatoes. And I usually a parsnips and have them that way. So I haven't tried this recipe either. So let's see. They're good and tender. That honey with the salt and pepper is really good. Um, it's a good combination. Tastes good. So you try them and see how you like them. See you next week. Bye.